What's going on everybody, LK here, and today, a little more Guilty Gear Strive, I want to talk about how to win with characters in Guilty Gear. So of course we can say like, oh, you just empty the opponent's life bar, don't get hit until you die, things like that. But actually in Guilty Gear for a long time, uh, people have assigned like win conditions to a character. So we're talking about a situation where your character is very, very strong and you will get a lot of damage or close the round if you're in that situation. Knowing these are really important because one, it will help you know what to aim for in your matches. And two, it will help you know what to avoid at all costs from the opponent's character as well. In previous Guilty Gear games, sometimes characters could have two or even three win conditions, but in Strive, uh, like a bunch of other things, the game has been simplified a little bit, and the way they've gone about designing the characters is that every character has one really, really strong situation they can aim for. A bunch of characters have similar ones as well, so you're gonna he hear me repeat myself a lot of what I think uh, a character does to win a round. So first off, Soul. So Soul really shines in Strike Throw, and uh, by now we've all played against him a lot. When he corners you, especially, uh, his Strike Throw with Far Slash and the various options that come from it are very, very, very strong. Specifically too, getting hit by him really sucks because he's really good at building the enemy's risk gauge. So he's already a character that does a ton of damage, but then he also builds your risk gauge fast, which does more damage. So it's tough because you don't want to press buttons because you know he's going to do all this damage to you but eventually you have to pick something or else he's going to keep essentially forcing you in the same situation with plus frames over and over and over and it only takes a couple of throws for you to start thinking man like i can't keep taking these throws so kai surprisingly to me is like less strike throw but more like enforcing his plus frame so similar to soul he does actually really like doing pressure to you but he does it in like a different way than soul does now the big thing about kai is that the shock state uh changes the frame data on a lot of his moves so once you have this applied to an opponent, you can do a lot more frame traps that you can't normally do. Kai's damage output is actually much higher than people think it is. It just comes up from situational hits rather than soul just like hits you with 5H and deletes your life bar. So both of these characters apply pressure and they try to like vary their timing to catch you. Soul's a little bit more direct in that he has just straight up plus frames on a lot of his stuff. So he's just doing straight up strike throw. Kai doesn't straight up rely on strike throw but he does do it but he also has a bunch of ways he can apply plus frames as well especially once he gets this on so next we have may so may is another bruiser she is definitely on the strike throw type like soul she does a lot of damage she has a bunch of moves that have plus frames like her cold slash has plus frames which is really important uh her h dolphin also has plus frames which uh it's plus five which is quite a bit and she has a relatively fast command grab in overhead kiss this is a comboable command grab so you really want to hit your opponent with this if you play may it does a lot of damage and usually in the corner like there's not a lot of time to burst she's already a character that does a lot of damage so having the threat of the wall break too and making may stronger for the rest of the round is a really really serious thing so while some characters might struggle against her neutral game of like dolphin into dolphin type of stuff uh some characters deal with it really well and like sometimes she has a problem getting in so definitely the main thing you're aiming for is getting their back to the wall like this and running this strike throw game that she has so axel's a kind of interesting one because actually he doesn't really want to get in he wants to kind of just be at this this range like almost full screen range he has a lot of like really far pokes that uh, hit angles that the opponent wants to get in because this is an air dashing game So people want to like jump at you brush you down and he's trying to do whatever it takes to stop you Now one thing about Axel is that the new air dashes kind of make his life easier and harder at the same time But essentially maintaining this range is really really important for him and for the characters who can't get past this easily He is really really strong against another thing too is that you don't stay in the corner forever in this game right you can break the wall so there are some matchups where a character that like normally has trouble getting in on him like let's say eddie sato for example uh they have to reset you back to neutral back in the situation where he is really strong so there's actually like if they don't break the wall super it benefits him a lot okay so next we have chip so chip specifically i would say is really good when he knocks you down so when he knocks you down he has a few options so he has for example a command grab that he turns invisible it's kind of hard to hit him 
and he has an Alpha Blade that's a cross up. And he's got another version of Alpha Blade where he goes airborne and gets air options. So he has some pretty tricky mix ups that he can do. While his pressure game, especially in the corner, is really good as well, I wouldn't say it's something he's necessarily like aiming for, like he's trying to only rush you down. People who pick Chip are definitely trying to mix you. So once they knock you down, they're going to be running command grabs, Alpha Blade, cross ups, and in the corner, various wall riding tactics in order to mix you up. Now Potemkin, a little bit more straightforward since he's the grappler. He is, of course, a poke throw character. The way he goes about it is really different from the characters we've talked about so far. And where Soul's damage comes from him hitting you, not the grab. Potemkin's damage, he does a lot of damage when he hits you too, but the throw itself also does a ton of damage as well. He also has a bunch of things to encourage his opponent to try to do something. The main one is this new move that he has. I think it's called Garuda Impact. Uh, this move is a guard stagger. So when the opponent defends this move, they reel back. And Potemkin has a ton of frame advantage to work with. So the defender has to do something about it. They have to mash it or they have to jump it. So this move is really helpful in encouraging the defender to do something to give you a better chance of getting like a normal hit. So Faust is next. So Faust was kind of a weird one because in Exert he had more than one way he could win the game. So he could rely heavily on the items to set up neutral for him and then he could use them to support them. He also had really good corner pressure. He had like instant overheads, a command grab. He had a lot of threat in his offense. So this time I think he's similar, maybe less emphasis on the items because the items are a little bit weaker than Exert and a little bit more emphasis on his neutral game. He's actually not easy to approach at all. His back walk is amazingly fast, so he's really good at repositioning himself. And he has really huge moves that cover a lot of space. His return on hit is pretty high as well. So actually playing a good neutral game with him will be pretty annoying for most characters to deal with. And he has another situation that's incredibly strong, which is the command grab situation. So when he command grabs you, he puts the afro on you right away. And from this, he gets a variety of instant overheads or lows. So this is a really, really, really bad situation. The game really wants him to use this command grab. It's easily his best mix up and his return is really, really high. And then we have Melia, uh, the coolest character in the game. Somehow they made a super sick, super fast, super mobile character but the main thing you're going for with milia is you want this uh legit like that is the thing you're aiming for uh a lot of the things that people say about her like she doesn't do enough damage and stuff are all fixed by this but once she gets this it's party time the opponent if they don't have like a reversal they have to hold that it's a really 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 strong situation and it's basically the main one you're aiming for in every single matchup so Zato is actually pretty interesting because he has uh, the shadow that he controls, right? So I actually feel like what will happen long term is that in some matchups, it's going to be an emphasis on maintaining the neutral game and using your shadow to protect you slash make it difficult for the opponent to get in. And then the other plan, which will probably apply straight up to all matchups, will be getting the shadow on them and running offense. So right now he gets a lot of return off stuff like fast dust, for example, would be one where other characters would need meter. He could just fast dust and use the shadow to combo up it. So he's got like some pretty good mix up potential. Ram is a little bit more straightforward. She wants to hit you with this button in the corner. That's <laughs> in my opinion, that's like all she's aiming for because of how much damage she does if she hits you with your back to the wall and how hard it is to burst her when she gets these hits her neutral game and pressure game are really good and she has good mix-ups as well especially when she has meter but most of the stuff she does when it happens mid-screen is not so bad and you can like take it but when she does it in the corner your life bar is gone so leo is a pretty interesting one so what he's aiming for is to be back turned in front of you mid screen especially after say a knockdown he's incredibly strong in this situation he can go through you he has a fast blow and essentially an instant overhead and there are a lot of variables to how he can time it because he can go through you even when you're knocked down well actually in my opinion it's actually a little easier to defend him in the corner because in the corner you don't have to worry about him running through you so in the corner, you only have to worry about high low and uh, command grab because he has a command grab because that's cool. But in mid screen, you got to watch out for him going through you as well. So I think it, specifically mid screen is probably the worst mix up you can get from him. Now, Nago's a pretty interesting character too. So he's like a rushdown style character. He's going to be rushing you down with things that are like relatively quick. And he's going to be mixing in frame traps with like trying to take turns so he can get 
a command grab on you. Basically around here is his ideal range. If he hits you, he does a ton of damage. If he grabs you, his blood gauge will drain. So during this time, he can go really crazy. Nago's kind of unique too in that he has a situation where he probably is going to lose, which is uh when he loses the mask, when his blood gauge fills up because he loses life during this time. He loses a lot of life. So even though he gets buffed, like a lot of his normals are bigger and he gets an extra super, his life is draining. So this is like a comeback opportunity for his opponent. So you generally want to avoid this. There are some Nago Yuriki players who are like, I don't care, I'm swinging anyway type of energy. But for the most part, it's a pretty volatile strategy. So uh, this is what I, this is like a losing condition for him. So we got Fiona from Shrek here, AKA Giovanna, and she's a bruiser as well. So she's trying to pull up on you and use her plus frames to make you respect her. So she actually has a lot of moves that are plus. So she has her close slash that's plus. She has the spiral arrow that's also plus. She has this kind of overhead hop kick that can also hit cross up that is also plus. And she's got an air super that's also plus. So she has a lot of things that keeps frame advantage. She also has dash cancels on her close slash so she has a lot of ways to vary up her offense so anji i had to think about this for a while because uh, i'm actually not too sure so the thing i was thinking about was how much damage he gets if he hits you with the mix up of fusion the overhead follow-up in particular is pretty fast and the return is pretty high but i think you need to be in the corner to do this and there's like some risk with his fusion mix up as well because um the high and the low are punishable the low is like minus seven so you have to be sure to like space it very carefully or else he's gonna get punished but at least from what i've played against him so far this is kind of the thing they're aiming for because despite it being unsafe the return is really high and you can't mash fujin so he has ways to make you respect his pressure and last is eno so eno is a mix-up character like milia but uh they go about doing their mix-ups different ways so similarly to milia she wants to get a sweep knockdown on you but generally instead you're going to be doing this note projectile uh the ways they set it up are going to be different too you don't necessarily get it off everything the way milia does milia always gets h disc off of uh, her sweep where you know you might have to do a different thing depending on different spacing now another thing that you know has like under her oh i knock you down and i win is that when she has meter she is considerably stronger mainly because her super this air super causes a guard stagger so when she has meter you can't be too liberal with like how you attack her when she's flying at you if you don't have a dp or something that's invincible and you can't get to her in time then this is just going to knock you down then she gets another mix up and then of course if you just block it regularly she gets a mix up anyway she also gets a much stronger command grab option in this so when she has meter she is much 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 stronger so keep that in mind Okay, hopefully that made sense. So this is what I feel right now. This can change a little bit still uh, how the characters go about winning the game. So when you're confused in a matchup on how do you beat an enemy character or how do you stop a character from running their game plan, just remember that each character is aiming for a situation where they're basically at their strongest, where they'll get a lot of damage if they're correct. And just keep that in mind when you're planning your defense and like how to avoid bad situations. As usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.